Hello, my name is Don Martel, and for those who don't know me, I've been shooting for 40 years. This is an introductory course on metering. Knowing your tools and how they work is of utmost importance if you want to become a great photographer. You want to be able to know what your camera is going to do before it actually does it. Uh, this will enable you to see like your camera sees and metering uh, is a very important part of that. There are basically three types of metering, matrix, center weight, and spot. The first type of metering I'd like to deal with is matrix metering. Uh, most cameras are shipped on matrix metering, so if you've never even explored your camera menu, your camera is set to matrix metering. Matrix metering is very complex. Some people think they know what it does. Uh, some people think it's all a big mystery. And it basically is putting your metering on autopilot. Uh, there will be no consistency. Here's a, one explanation uh, on the internet that I've pulled off. Um, the matrix metering first tries to guess what you're photographing, the hard part, and then makes its appropriate exposure calculations. It's actually trying to guess what you're photographing. I don't think that's going to work. And here's 14 more pages of app apparently how matrix metering works. Now, nobody really knows how it works, so if you want to be consistent, uh, you're going to have to choose another method. Here's one, another one. Uh, it's a quick introduction to matrix metering, and at the very end of the sentence, it says, there is no better way to meter your exposures than matrix. Not true. Matrix metering does work some of the time. Um, but me being a photographer, I want to be able to know what it's going to do all of the time and take the complete guesswork out of it. Matrix metering is a guess. The next, next type of metering is center weight metering and that's the metering I use 100% of the time. I have used spot metering but center weight metering is the most reliable and you can understand what the camera is doing and where it's taking exposure reading from. This um, diagram of the inside of a camera basically shows you on center weight metering, ignoring any of the squares, what contributes to or what affects center weight metering. Now, metering, your camera always wants to to bring it to 18% gray. So if your subject matter is white, it's going to underexpose it. If it's black, it's going to overexpose it. And by knowing what's in the center and either you should be adding exposure or taking away exposure is the name of the game. If you can anticipate what it's going to do before it's done, uh, you'll be a lot better off. Okay, so now you know approximately where center weight metering is operating out of. Um, the, and this thing about 18% gray. Um, my, I asked an instructor many years ago, my world is not in black and white. So what colors are neutral tones? Like what color red is 18% gray? What color blue is 18% gray? Um, and in shooting with digital, you can kind of figure that out and shoot after, but the least amount of work that you do after in Photoshop, the better. Um, so I was walking into a dollar store, I picked up some construction paper, and found out, uh, I was looking at the different colors, and I thought, hmm, these look like 18% gray. So what I want to show you is, in fact, what 18% gray looks like in color. Um, this is 18% blue. This piece of paper right here. So, um, 
if you're shooting center weight metering and you have a dark blue here, you and you shoot it on meter, you're going to end up with this color blue, which is neutral blue. The next one, red, um, this is also 18% red. I've shot this piece of construction paper on meter and it basically matches what I see with my eye. It gives me neutral, neutral red. Uh, last but not least, green. So this is average gray green. If you were shooting cedar trees, for example, they're much darker you would have to subtract exposure. If you shoot cedar trees, uh, what from what your camera is telling you, you will end up with these co this color cedar trees, which is not the color of cedar trees. So any darker tones, you need to subtract exposure. Pink or light green, you would have to add exposure. This image here is actually a white piece of paper shot on meter which gives you 18% gray. The next shot, which doesn't look much different, is actually black shot on meter. So that is 18% gray. There's a white one, which looks like gray, and a black one. So in order to um, get the correct exposure for both of these, you would either have to add exposure for the white or subtract exposure from the black. The next image, just for fun, I stuck, a, it's half white and half black, shot on meter. Now, the black and the white are balancing each other out. I shot it on meter, so hence I have pure blacks and pure whites. Okay, now I'm going to show you just a couple examples of that metering system, trying to bring black to average gray and white to average gray. Um, I have always talked about shooting a black cat on coal in my workshops. If you shoot a black cat on coal, you're going to get a gray cat with gray coal. So I was in New Brunswick and lo and behold, I see a black cat with a black background. And here's the shot that I've been talking about for 20 years. I always say, shoot first, think later. Now, in front of me has been the shot I've been chasing for 20 years, and I have a black cat with a black background, and what do I do? I shoot first, which my camera was on meter, so I have now a gray cat with a gray background. I couldn't believe I did it, but I did it. As soon as I heard the shutter go clunk, clunk, I knew exactly that the shot was off. The next shot I dialed in at minus three is basically where I should have shot the first one from, but I, I was too excited about seeing the shot. Okay, this is the uh, second shot I took, and this is dialing in minus three exposure. So I got a black cat with a back, black background, and you can see his eyes and that highlights on his hair, and it's perfectly exposed. And so if I would have shot what my camera tells me to do, obviously the first shot was a total wash. Second shot is how I knew I should have shot it, but was too excited when I saw the black cat. So this is minus three or minus two and two thirds exposure from what my meter was telling me. Okay, now we're going to go to the other extreme. Um, snow, for example. If you shoot snow on meter, you're going to end up with that gray snow. So in order to get, this is a good example, you would have to add exposure or go on the plus side of things to make it come out like you see it with your eyes. I know we've gone both extremes, so complete black and complete white, and then there's everything in between. The last type of metering I like to deal with is spot metering. It basically works on the same principle as center weight. It wants to bring everything to average gray. Um, the only difference being is you can measure a small portion of the picture space, like this little circle here. Some cameras you can move the circle around and spot meter on different things. 
I prefer center weight metering over spot, but I know a lot of guys like spot metering, and they're both basically equal. But when it comes to matrix metering, it's a total guess. You do not know what it's trying to do. Okay, now I've talked about adding exposure or subtracting exposure uh, based on if it's darker tones or lighter tones to get the correct exposure. Just to point out a couple things, on meter, when I, I'm talking about on meter, it's in zero. So if you move either your aperture or your shutter speed, this guy will either move either way. This way to the minus, this way to the plus. When you're center, using center weight metering like I use all the time, if the subject matter is generally dark, you want to subtract exposure. If the subject matter is on the more towards white or light in tone, you want to add exposure. It's really that simple. In conclusion, um, metering is very simple. You know it's going to bring your tones to average gray or average gray red or blue or green, depending on what you're shooting. Um, back in the old days, we used to open up a box of film and it would say on a cloudy bright day, it was 250 at f8 with this kind of film. And that's as simple as it gets. If you're looking you know, at a DSLR and you are looking at different subject matters and it's an overcast day, your meter will lie to you often. It will say there's more light over here or there's less light over here. It's lying to you often. Once you get a correct exposure, light does not change on subject matter. The light is the light is the light. I was up in Lake Tomogamy a couple of years ago and uh, a couple of the students wanted to know how to shoot stars. So we went out about 11 o'clock at night, grabbed our flashlights, told them to stick it on a tripod, set their ISO to 3200. Uh, focusing you really couldn't do, it couldn't autofocus, so we took the flashlights, manually focused their cameras to infinity, since the stars are so far away, and told them 30 seconds, ISO 3200, wide open, bang, you've got the Milky Way. So we, they both took their shots, and they're, they're chimping on the back of their camera, and they're going, sir, there's nothing on the back of this camera. And I've done this like a million times. So I take the camera and I chip on the back and I blow it all up. And all I can see is this little bits of noise. And I'm like, what is going on here? I've done this a thousand times. It works. I looked at the front of both their cameras. Both of them had their lens caps on. They failed.